All right. CyberArk is a privileged access security tool. CyberArk is a privileged access security tool. But before we know what CyberArk does and uh, what uh, go into much more technical details of CyberArk, we need to understand what we are doing here, what privileged access security is. Why do we need to secure these kind of accesses? So does this term look familiar to any of you? Privileged access? Yeah, basically like the, uh, it based on the account, based on right. accounts which, right. we, which we use for the right. unique right. window. It's like admin access to servers also. It's like uh, mm -hmm. uh, special privileges, say on Oracle accounts. Uh, right. Exactly. That's that's correct, man. Thank you. Yeah, Thank we you. can say it is a super user access. Super user access. That's a great example. Thank you, Prayagraj. All right, so privileged access is basically any account that has higher abilities in the systems. Any systems, any account that has higher abilities in the systems. Higher abilities as in the account can be used to log into the system and perform server level changes or configurational changes or install a software, create a user, remove a user. Any of these activities, if you are able to do in a particular system, you are logged in with a privileged account. Okay? So normal read-only standard user account will not have that much capability. You might have noticed when you log into your company laptop, uh, they sometimes do not allow you to install software. Okay? They, uh, you'll have to raise a ticket to support desk and they will be logging in uh, and they will be doing all the installation. So how come they are able to log in and do the work and you are not? Because they are using a highly capable account to log into your system and make those changes. These type of accounts that can be used to perform a server level changes or have higher abilities in the system are called privileged accounts. And the accesses that flows through these type of accounts will call them privileged access. Okay. Now the privileged accounts will be created in every device that you have within your organization. Windows servers, Linux server, Oracle database, any device, even the applications will have a, the privilege accounts created in order to perform maintenance works. Okay. There are few types of privilege accounts. Before we understand how do we secure these privilege accounts, let's understand, let's talk more about the privilege accounts. There are two types, basically interactive privilege accounts and non-interactive privilege accounts. Okay? Interactive privilege accounts are basically the accounts which you use to log into the system and perform the work. Used by humans to log into the system and perform the maintenance activities and operations activities. Okay? So if you are typing in the username and password to log into the system, you are interacting with the account. If any password change is required, if any uh, policy change, if any permission modification is required, you are going to do that yourself or maybe the support desk admins are going to do that. So any interaction with the accounts, if you are having regular interaction with the accounts, these type of accounts will be called interactive privilege accounts, which basically are being used by humans. Okay. Examples, Super user account. Yeah, super user account is basically an account that has the most privilege without, within the particular system. Each of the system that you build in the organization is going to have a super user account. For example, uh, root accounts in Linux server, if you have ever worked with Linux, local administrator in Windows servers, sys administrator in databases. Every system is going to have an account created which administrators are going to use that account in order to log into the target systems and do maintenance work. For example, if uh, let's say patching needs to be done or uh, any policy needs to be pushed in order to uh, push new functionalities, these type of accounts will be used, super user accounts will be used by your administrators to do all the work. Okay. Second example, Active Directory Domain Administrator accounts. Yeah, domain administrator accounts are basically created in Active Directory. Does anyone know what Active Directory is? 
Active Directory? Yeah. Yes, yeah, Sanjeev. Uh, yeah, so I'm working as a system administrator. So mm -hmm. I, I have knowledge on Active Directory. It is basically mm -hmm. used to create uh, end user accounts right. Uh, right. with basic access to the applications or to the system. Right. That's yeah. correct. It's like um, it's the corporate active. If it's a corporate active directory, then all the employees' accounts could be found there. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, they could they could be a member of various groups based on country or region or uh, mm -hmm. privileges. Right. right. So they are get they can authenticate and get authorized also. That's correct. Thank you, my yeah. So directory service, you know, where we can uh, store the users where we can store the groups and all. Right, that's true as well. Thank you. So basically Active Directory is a repository. Yes, Sanjay, one question, Sanjay. Sorry for interrupting you. Uh, I, I just have a, like a, some uh, one uh, doubt. Like, always like how exactly we segregate like see, uh, in the Active Directory both we will be creating accounts as well as the Mm -hmm. User side. So, how we will segregate that if this is an account and this is a, a user and this is a group and user, oh. we can identify. But how right. exactly? Right. I uh, yeah, got your question, Naveen. Basically, you are asking whether uh, uh, how do we distinguish the user account and the privilege accounts, right? Exactly. Right. So, user accounts are created for individuals. User accounts will be created for individuals. These type of user accounts will uh, will not have any privileges defined on the system level. The okay, user account will basically be a read only and standard user account. Privilege account will have certain naming conventions. Basically in the organizational level architectures, you are going to have naming conventions for the privilege accounts that will uh, distinguish them from the user accounts that you have. User accounts will uh, ideally have certain attributes, first name, last name, email ID. That's not uh, something you have in the privilege accounts. Okay, so this is how you distinguish it. Okay, but all together it will be in the same uh, zone, same right? Like for example, yes. under the, okay, okay, thanks sir. It's Sorry. going to be in the same directory. Yeah. All right, so Active Directory is a repository for uh, all the resources that you have within the organization and that you want to keep within the same network. Resources, any uh, as in any servers, any workstation, any user account, any privileged accounts, all those kind of resources that you want to keep in your organization's network will be kept in the Active Directory domain. Sometimes to manage all those resources, you create administrator accounts yeah, in the entire Active Directory that will have the permission to access all the resources and perform maintenance tasks on all these resources. These type of accounts are called domain administrator account. Also an example of interactive privilege accounts will be used by your support desk, your Active Directory uh, administrators to log into the Active Directory and perform the maintenance work. Same goes for your uh, local administrator and sysadmins for databases. These are also an example of uh, interactive privilege accounts used by the support desk or administrator or infrastructure admins to log into the systems and perform uh, the maintenance task and perform the task that requires some privileged, uh, some higher capabilities within the system. Okay. Second type of uh, privilege accounts uh, you'll see in the organization is non-interactive accounts. Non-interactive accounts are basically the accounts that are that has no interaction with humans at all. Basically, these accounts are being mapped in some application or some scripts. So let's say, let's take an example to understand what non-interactive accounts are. Let's talk about hard-coded credential. Let's say we have a script, we have a PowerShell script that has certain functionality and we need to push this functionality to uh, hundreds of servers in one single go. Okay, let's say we have a certain time limit and we want to push this functionality through this code in hundreds of servers. We cannot have our administrators type in the username and password to each of the servers. That's going to be very tedious and very inefficient work. So in this case, sometimes the organizations are going to write the username and password within the script itself. And the script is going to read this username and password to automatically log into the target systems, to automatically log into the servers and perform its push its functionalities. Script is going to read the username and password written within the code, 
it's going to read that username and password and it's going to log into the system to push its functionality right so the username and password the credentials that you are writing within the code it's called hard coded credentials example of non interactive account in this process there is no human interaction there is no human intervention the script is going to initiate login to the server itself it's going to push the functionality itself okay, by using the username and password same goes for service accounts yeah, another example of non interactive accounts has uh, does anyone of you know what services are services ever encountered with this window yes yes okay Basically, to run the right. uh, background version to connect to the application. Exactly. Service Mostly. account is also like application trying to connect to database. Right. So a specific account is created for that. Uh, right. Within the systems, for systems connecting to one to another, mm -hmm. uh, would not use particular individual accounts, but a service account. Exactly. With yes. a specific set of privileges yes. or connection yes. properties. So services are basically created within the servers or within the workstations uh, for performing certain automatic tasks. So let's say you are installing an application, and this application needs to perform certain task on the back end automatically. It cannot always depend on humans to do that because it needs to run those tasks twenty four by seven. When uh, it needs to do it all the time, it cannot wait for administrators to. do that those tasks manually so in those cases the applications as soon as you install those application it's going to create a service on the server where it is hosted and this service is going to perform all those tasks automatically for that particular application okay the service are basically services are basically there just to perform certain automatic tasks now sometimes these services might need to log into other systems as well in order to do uh, in order to perform its functionality and we cannot wait for any human to feed the credential while the service tries to log in okay, so sometimes you can write the username and password within the service itself within the service itself you can write the username and password hope you are able to see my entire screen you can write the username and password within the service and this will allow the service to automatically log into the target systems and push its functionality so basically we are giving the service the ability to automatically log into other systems as well by you embedding a credential here these type of credentials that you are using for services are called service accounts okay. also an example of non human or non interactive accounts okay. in any privileged access security implementation the interactive accounts are going to be the first priority whether you are implementing cyber arc or beyond trust or thicotic the interactive privileged accounts are going to be the first priority why because these type of credentials are the most privileged credentials you can have within the organization and the passwords for them are exposed to humans okay your admins know the, knows the password the passwords for them for these privileged accounts are exposed to humans and not a best practice uh lead, can lead to exposure okay it's making the accounts more prone to the damages so these type of interactive accounts are the first priority in any privileged access security implementation project okay non human account or non interactive accounts are the important privilege accounts as well they are sensitive accounts as well but the credentials are not as exposed as uh, the interactive ones so this is going to be the second part of uh, any privileged access security project this is priority number 2 for managing non human accounts uh, cyberarc has another solution called application access manager we'll talk about that as well but the focus is going to be the interactive privileged accounts okay. any questions so far it's clear okay let's move forward let's talk about risk associated with the privilege accounts what are the risk associated with every privilege accounts that you create 
and what happens if you do not secure your privileged accounts why are companies these days uh, so aggressively looking to implement privileged access security in their organization yeah. let's talk about this uh, active directory ad admin accounts we'll talk about uh, the risk associated with uh, uh, some use cases here so let's talk about active directory admin account here this active directory domain administrator account is created on a repository which contains all the resources within your organization okay all the resources that are within your network zone so let's say you have uh, 10000 servers in your uh, organization in your infrastructure all of them joined to the active directory network you created a domain administrator account this domain administrator account will have access to all these 10000 servers okay yeah, one set of username and password can be used to access all these 10000 servers and not only access this account will be having administrator rights to all these server that means it can be used to perform any changes any server level changes even decommission the server uh, this particular account will have that much capability in all the servers at once okay so this is how sensitive this is how much powerful a privileged account can be in the organization if uh, and it's not like as you are going to have one or two admin account uh, you are going to have uh, multiple ad domain administrator accounts sometimes even created for each individual in your active directory administrative team okay so 10 15 privilege active directory domain account is very common practice any one of these accounts gets compromised you are putting your entire system your entire infrastructure at risk you know, all the 10000 servers can be accessed using one single account so this is how sensitive the privilege accounts can be you do not want to lose them you do not want to compromise these type of credential these can basically act as the key to entire infrastructure okay? you do not want to lose them second your accounts needs to be centralized your privilege account should have a central repository so that auditing can be done very easily auditing can be done in more efficient manner uh, let's say let's take example when your accounts are not centralized what happens then let's say there is a application team uh, application team wants to install an application and they need a server for that application team needs to install an application and they need a server for that so this is how it works in it this is uh, the uh, usual practice that they will uh, the application team is going to create a request a service request to build a server the infrastructure team reviews it and then creates a server infrastructure team creates a server as soon as they create a server they create a built in administrator account along with the server irrespective of what operating system is whether it is windows or linux they will create a built in administrator account and the local administrator account which they are going to use for future maintenance and operations task if uh, any patch patching needs to be pushed or any policy needs to be pushed uh, they will be using those type of accounts to do those task so once the server is created account is created they will hand over the server to the application team application team got the server they installed their own application and when they installed their own application they created the administrator account within the application so we have a application administrator account and a server administrator account we have two privilege accounts in one server being managed at two different places one with the server infrastructure team one with the application team and if this is the process you follow it's going to be the case with all the 10000 servers you are going to have the privilege accounts will be managed at two different places and let's say i'm an auditor i want to see the activities of these privilege accounts activities that are being done through these privilege accounts i have to go to the server team to retrieve the activities of the server administrator account i'll have to go to the application team to retrieve the activities of application administrator account i'll have to go to the database team to retrieve the database administrator account this is going to be a very tough and complicated process for auditors and it is very likely to, there are very high chances that auditors might miss out on important details auditing will not be done properly auditor might miss out on important details this is where solutions like cyberarc can help you build a centralized platform for your privilege accounts it can offer a centralized repository where you can onboard all the privilege accounts 
it in one place, whether it is created on server uh, in, or it is created on the application in, or it is created on the database in, you can onboard all the privilege account in one central repository that is CyberArk. And if a user want to use these accounts to connect to the target system, the you can enforce policies and uh, enforce your users to log into CyberArk, authenticate themselves, and only then they should be able to use the accounts to connect to the server. Let's say you implemented all this policy. There will be logs generated for each of the activities. Okay, use uh, the CyberArk is going to generate a log saying that this user has used this privilege account at this point of time. These are the activities that it performed. In this case, we are keeping track of, of every activity. We are making sure that if the sensitive credentials are being used, we know who is logging in. We know they are, what they are doing. Okay? And auditor's job will be much easier in this case. All they need to do is log in to the CyberArk UI and all the details will be waiting for them. Application account, server account, database account, every details of these privilege accounts will be waiting for them. Uh, auditing will be done in more proper and detailed manner. They will, uh, they are very less likely to miss out on details. Okay. So uh, one question here. Yes, go ahead. Madam. So once the log is generated, the mm -hmm. person has to, like the people responsible for audit uh, mm -hmm. internal teams will have to go through the logs or they can build dashboards, which mm -hmm. can uh, easily point point. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. So uh, they, there is a dashboard, there is a monitoring tab as well. You can see the recordings. There is a dashboard as well. There is a detailed report, Excel report as well. You can filter out the activities from there. There are multiple ways you can retrieve the data. Thanks. All right. Okay. Uh, third, access control and accountability. If you are using sensitive credentials in your uh, infrastructure, you should be accountable for your actions. And let's say when we do not have any privileged access security solution and I the password is exposed to me, I know the password of a particular account, I'll simply initiate this remote desktop connection client. I hope everyone knows what a remote desktop connection client is. Yes, thank you. Okay, if not, a uh, remote desktop connection client is a software that allows you to connect to the servers remotely from your laptop or from your workstation. Okay, you can connect to servers from your local machine remotely using the IP address, username, and password. Okay, that's all the things that you need. So let's say you have the IP address of the server, you know the privilege account, username, and the password. All you need to do is initiate this connection from here. And if you know the password, you would be able to connect to the target system. Let's say you are, once you are connected to the target system, you choose to do some unauthorized activity. Let's say you, you uh, shared some files to someone who is not authorized, you deleted some user, any activities that you were not supposed to do using that privilege account. There are no, uh, no logs are going to say that this particular user, let's say if I logged in and did all these activities, no logs are going to say that Sanjeev has logged in and did all these activities. Event logs of the server are, are going to say that this activity was performed by uh, the administrator account. So unless they track my IP, it's not really possible to know that San Sanjeev has logged in and did all these activities, even if I'm using the most sensitive credentials in the organization. And this no. is... Yes. So one query, suppose you have to do it in, uh, in the context, like you receive a ticket for doing it mm -hmm. as part of your job. Mm -hmm. So, okay, you log in and do this particular set of action, which is requested, right. which is approved. Mm -hmm. So right. is the ticket also associated uh, here in the cyber art or it would be separate only? You can do a ticketing integration. That's possible as well. You can, uh, you can do a ticketing integration and, uh, uh, once you have that ticketing integration in place, Manohar, it's CyberArk is going to prompt you whenever you try to initiate the connection, you can initiate the connection from CyberArk itself without exposing the credential. It's going to make the connection on behalf of you. 
and it's going to prompt you for the ticket number and only when you enter the correct number cyberarch has the ability to validate the ticket number from your ticketing tool once that integration is in place and only when you enter the ticket number it's going to allow the connection so that can be done okay thanks all right i was saying uh, this remote desktop connection client can be used to establish connections to the target server remotely as long as you have the correct username and password and once you make this connection there is no detailed logs generated uh, that this user has performed this activity you can uh, get away with any activities that you do any unauthorized activities that you do when you are using the remote desktop connection and directly connecting to the server so this is not a good practice this is what can be avoided using tools like cyberarc what cyberarc does here it onboards the privilege accounts into the cyberarc repository and rotates the password it changes the password so that the end users like us i do not know the password any longer okay, cyberarc has changed the password but i have a genuine requirement to use this account in order to connect to the server that's my job i'll have to log in to cyberarc ui authenticate myself and only when i am authenticated only when i have proper authorization to use this account i'll be able to use this account to initiate connections to this target server and when i do it through cyberarc cyberarc is going to automatically enter the password on behalf of me without exposing the passwords to me i'm not going to know the password cyberarc is going to establish the connection automatically by entering the password and uh, i'll be connected to the server i do not know the password still i'm connected to the server and if i'm connected through cyberarc any activities that i do will be recorded in a text format cyberarc is going to generate a text log saying that uh, sanjeev has initiated control panel window at this time a notepad window at this time application one at this time so it's going to keep a track of my application my activities along with that it's also going to record my entire session in video format my entire session will be recorded in a video format so even a mouse move is recorded and will be saved in the cyberarc for auditors to see okay so this this is uh, how much control it gives the auditor this is how much visibility it gives to the auditor ensuring that you have accountability in place if you are using sensitive credentials within the organizations okay. along with that there are certain uh, regulatory bodies uh, that has certain standards that every organization needs to follow if you have ever worked with uh, banking domain there is a uh, sox compliance give me one minute sorry so uh, i was saying uh, there are certain regulatory bodies that has certain standards in place so if you have ever worked with uh, banking domain uh, or insurance domain there is uh, sox compliance or there is payment card interface if you have worked with healthcare there is hipaa compliance all these regulatory bodies have certain standards that every organization needs to follow if they fail to follow it and uh, uh, let's say they get their accounts compromised their infrastructure compromised Uh, there can be a lot of consequences these regulatory bodies are going to impose certain fines on you these fines are usually very hefty um, so what happens if you lose your accounts and get your infrastructure compromised you are losing your existing uh, client existing business you are losing your data you are losing you are damaging your reputation uh, lawsuits are going to follow uh, you are going to get fined by these regulatory bodies not in very ideal situation to be in that is why uh, companies these days are uh, focusing on the privileged access security this this is why the domain is uh, growing these days any questions so far yeah no sanjeev all right so let's quickly uh, cover the requirements from a pam solution we have certain uh, expectations if you are investing so much it's usually uh, the cost is very high to implement these type of security solutions 
let's say if you are investing so much in a privileged access management solution this spam means privileged access management yeah if you are investing so much in a privileged access management solution there should be some expectations there should be some uh, some features in mind that this is how the solution is going to uh, provide value to me this is how the solution is going to secure my privileged accounts so let's talk about certain standard features that any pam solution should have uh, the first one the ability to rotate passwords the yeah, ability to rotate passwords you should be able to define the policies related to how frequent the password rotation should happen basically this feature is just to avoid the static passwords risk of static passwords you should not keep static passwords for longer period uh, that uh, increases the risk so you should be able to rotate the passwords frequently and uh, this is something that administrators can do as well right but uh, why do we need a solution for this because in the running infrastructure will have uh, thousands of servers and each of those servers are going to contain two or three privileged accounts which makes it uh, 2000 3000 privileged accounts will be tough for administrators to handle it manually so the solution can do the job for you uh, you can define the policies how frequent the password should be rotated what should be the complexity uh, do you need the special characters in the password how long the password should be all those policies you should be able to configure in the privileged access security solution and it should be able to rotate the password automatically for you within the uh, during the time period that you have defined sanjeev one question here mm -hmm. if it is single sign on like mm -hmm. uh, in a in a in a company right. like there are 15 systems if right. all are single sign on mm -hmm. or some are not single sign on mm -hmm. then it will vary right so uh, single sign on manohar uh, single sign on is basically used for uh, individual user accounts right individual users can uh, they do not have to type in the credential for every application they can simply use one sing one credential to log into all the all applications now we are not focusing on the individual user credentials here we will be focusing on the privileged accounts that does not have single sign on anybody okay, okay. all right second should be capable enough to limit the least privilege method least privilege method that means only those permission should be provided that is really really required for individuals to complete their task okay. let's take example to understand this let's say a developer wants to log into a server and he needs to perform some code changes and then he needs to log out that's all he needs to do we are not going to provision the account to the we are not going to provision the access through the privilege account in the administrator account we are not going to give them that because they don't really need it they do not need to make any server level changes all they need is to log into the server perform certain code change and then logs out so we are going to create a read only account and provision the access through the privileged access security solution the cyber app so the solution will help you to build a least privilege method for all your uh, users all your end users and making sure that uh, only those individuals have access to the privilege account who really really require it yeah. so limitations on the privilege accounts that's what we want to achieve here third audit trail should be there detailed audit tra trails as in any user if they try to log in to the servers using a sensitive credential onboarded in cyberarc cyberarc is going to give you detailed logs tracking the activities of the end user seeing that this user has used law, used this privilege account to log into this server at this time and performed all these activities okay. along with that detailed uh, sessions will be recorded in a video format so users will have uh, auditors will have the uh, ab uh, ability to see the entire activities that end user has done on the target session the video format recording will be available keystroke logins as in any high privilege command that you are executing in a command line interface such as linux servers you are writing a command like uh, add user or password reset these type of commands will be recorded in a text format as well saying that this user has initiated this command at this time okay. so this much control it gives to the auditors 
uh, they should be able to see all the activities uh, uh, even the, even even the application initiation any activities that end users are doing inside the target server those will be recorded in text format and in video format for auditors to see okay, so it generates detailed audit trails for the auditors multi factor authentication should be there uh, multi factor authentication is basically added adding another layer of security in your authentication process uh, most common example your banking online banking portals when you try to log into the online banking portals you type in the username and password it asks you for an otp okay one time password and only when you provide the right uh, correct one time password it allows you to log in so you are going through two factors of authentication similarly we are going to implement two factor authentication multi factor authentication in the solution in the cyber arc solution so before the end user are able to access the privilege accounts they do not only have to go through the username and password field they also have to go through another factor of authentication cyberarc allows you to integrate with all other mfa solutions out there can be duo can be octa can be radius can be rsa tokens every other solution can be integrated cyberarc does not have a mfa solution of its own but it allows you to integrate with all other solution okay. basically the idea behind implementing mfa solution is to ensure that user impersonations can be avoided you cannot share your user id and password and someone else will uh, can try to log in and retrieve the credential even if your user id and passwords are exposed the mfa will still prevent the login okay. session management detailed uh, session monitoring will be there monitoring as in tracking of the activities generating a text log of uh, activities of the end user which user initiated what applications at what time session isolation means preventing data overlap between two sessions so if i let's say uh, you, your application team is using generic credential a shared account uh, available to multiple members across the team if user 1 uses that account to connect to a server and saves some text file he might be uh, writing some sensitive details in there maybe organizational detail or maybe his own passwords other user uses the same account to log in to the same server the file should not be visible to other users okay. ideally when you when you make the connections this way using the remote desktop connection directly the server is not going to recognize the individual users but in case of cyberarc cyberarc is going to make sure that two sessions are separated and isolated even if they are being initiated by the same account to the same server we'll talk more about session isolation and session monitoring we'll know the background process back end process and what goes on the back end for to technically achieve all these results we'll talk more about monitoring and recording and isolation how does it work in coming sessions will uh, explain it and will even see it on the uh, our environments on the virtual environments but this is what cyber arc can achieve for you monitoring recording and isolation the last feature that you uh, would have is temporary access the ability to provision temporary access to the privileged accounts so if a user needs access for one or two hours you should not be provisioning the access on the permanent basis you should only allow the end users to have the access for the required time frame so cyberarc can read the time period what you define in the solution you can say something like user need access for 2 hours and uh, cyberarc will be able to provision the access automatically as soon as the ac uh, time period expires it would deprovision the access automatically so just in time access is also possible these are the expectations these are some standard features that you should look for in any other privileged access security solution any questions yes sanju uh, so uh, sorry to interrupt just want to check on this uh, session isolation basically mm -hmm. so uh, as you mentioned like uh, uh, 
like uh, you mean like uh, two different users are associating with the same uh, uh, ser- server same generic like... account yeah so okay. same generic account uh, let's say administrator account is used by user 1 to log into the server and user 1 saves some file uh, user 2 uses the administrator account to log into the same server these two sessions will be separated and isolated and the data between these two sessions the files that user 1 had saved will not be visible for user 2 Oh, okay okay got it uh. and and uh, sanju one more question like uh, in in our environment like uh, as i am doing and uh, uh, in our organization like uh, uh, cyber uh, uh, this uh, cyber arc is being implemented but the con- the, the concern is like uh, i am not sure like is that the proper implementation or not by the team but uh, see basically how we are doing how we are logging into the present uh, environment is like they have created a gem box and from the gem box we are trying to log into the server uh, with our again username and password then how can we get, name it as a cyber arc solution because we are entering our username and passwords you are entering your username and password to log into the servers yes exactly but we will be logging to the cyber arc first and from there we will be connecting uh, the cyber arc will be connecting to us into a jump box to the jump box from yeah, the, that's... yeah from yeah. the jump box again again yeah. we will be connecting to the windows or to the uh, linux box so tell me this navin is the privilege account password exposed to you yeah obviously i will be entering you, the password right you are able to retrieve the password okay. yes i will be entering the password to you the will... linux servers okay you will be entering the passwords for linux servers yes i mean uh, any privilege account root account or something exactly i have the root access because i am the uh, uh, admin mm-hmm. so i will be okay. entering then how can because by uh, after listening to your conversation mm-hmm. then how can we treat it as a <coughs> right so, so your account. question is valid there navin uh, ideally the best practice says that uh, the password should not be exposed to end users even in uh, uh, implementations like this you should not you should allow the users to be able to connect to the servers but the password should not be exposed uh, but uh, not sure there can be certain cases certain cases when uh, it might be required for admins to get the password because sometimes after logging into the servers to do some specific activity you might require the password so at that time you might need to enter the password manually so that's why maybe they have uh, allowed you to retrieve the credential but ideally in uh, usual situations you should not be allowed to retrieve the credentials retrieve the password okay okay and and uh, other point is like for the file sh- file sharing okay file sharing basically yeah we'll be uh, like a uh, uh, setup is like we'll be retrieving the password and we'll be entering the password to for the file sharing right that's that's one use case as well that can happen file sharing you, you if you need to enter the password manually you should be able to retrieve it we can make an exception in that case so but but generally like uh, the password should be not exposed right if we yes. implement that's not the best practice that's not the oh. recommendations okay 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 thanks sanjeev so okay. this exception can be configured or uh... exceptions uh, in uh, it's just a ability it's just a permission that a check box that you need to mark on the tool but it has to be properly approved from uh, the leaders the organizations has to accept the risk with the with exposing the credentials okay okay all right so uh, we do not have much time uh, let's quickly cover the syllabus of this uh, particular course uh, what we are offering in this course module 1 is going to be the identity privileged access management introduction what are the pain areas what are the risk that are associated with our privilege accounts that we create and how does cyberarc manage those risks what is the expected solution how how does the privileged access security solution can tackle all those situations in module 2 we will learn about the detailed architecture of cyberarc the typical architecture and uh, the components that are involved so there are basically multiple components cyberarc has for database it has uh, the cyberarc vault for uh, front end ui it has password vault web access for session management session manager for password management uh, central policy manager all of these components are installed in a separate server ye off kar nahi ja
all of these components are installed in a separate server and all of these components are independent from each other and perform the independent functionality. In the module three, we are going to talk about each of these components functionality, the prerequisite communication part, what needs to be done in order to install these component and how does these components work on the backend. So we'll spend, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. One question is like, uh, you know, there is a risk that the server goes down mm -hmm. on which this uh, solution components are installed. So what is the architecture here? So we'll that... talk more about the architecture in the module. Okay. Module two will give you more detail on the architecture with graphical Fine, views and a uh, lot. Uh, but to answer your question here, we will have the fault tolerance systems. We'll build disaster recovery in order to, uh, and disaster recovery will basically replicate all the information in real time. So we'll have thanks. a backup ready for our infrastructure, okay? Thanks, thanks. Okay. And, and Sanju, one more point, Sanju, sorry for interrupting you. So will you be covering this also, for example, like since we are learning this for the new first time, right? So will you be covering under the cyber arc or you like, a, so for example, if we are getting a new client, so how to get, how to, uh, right. uh, get the info from them, like uh, the basic understanding Absolutely. of their environment and okay, yeah. okay. Right. We'll, we'll be covering Great. those questions. Okay. Okay. okay, so in the module three, we'll spend uh, half an hour or one hour on each of these components. We'll try to learn the theory of each of these component, uh, the prerequisite, the communication, the functionality, the backend process involved in each of these uh, particular components. We'll try to spend half an hour or one hour on each of them. Once we are comfortable with the theory, I'll provision the access to virtual machines hosted in cloud. Uh, basically, there will be five virtual machines, five servers created for each one of you in AWS cloud. And uh, the CyberArk softwares will be copied in those virtual machines. In the module uh, overview and uh, CyberArk infrastructure installation, we will talk about the installation each of each of these component, the vault, the PBWA, the center session manager server, the password manager server, will install each of these component, will understand the prerequisite in terms of network, in terms of hardware and software, will get to know the port requirements, and we will start installing, we'll start building our own CyberArk architecture. Okay, we'll, I'll uh, describe the steps in the session. Along with that, I'll give you the access to this installation guide, which contains each of the topics that we discuss uh, with detailed steps and along with the screenshot. So uh, you can even practice it in your leisure time. We'll cover the installation of each of the uh, components here. We'll even build our own Active Directory from scratch and integrate the Active Directory with existing CyberArk architecture. So uh, we'll create a lot of user accounts and privilege accounts in Active Directory, and we'll uh, see how we can perform a real-time use cases with uh, the Active Directory. We'll build our own email notification engine system, which will trigger alerts when uh, something goes wrong in our infrastructure. Once so the install like a, yes, I mean, uh, yeah. sorry to interrupt. So how long will we have the access for the this lab? Like, a, uh, it will be any duration, or like a, we can access like whenever we need some kind of testing. So the lab access will be uh, 35 for 35 days from the day it starts and it's going to be available for 24 seven. You can uh, just uh, log into the portal. Every one of you will have a account that you can use to log into AWS portal. Whenever you uh, have some time, just start the servers and start practicing. 24 by seven, it's going to be available for the next 35 days. Okay, only for it will be only for the 35 days. Uh, no more, no longer right. we can access. Right, we can work on the extension. That's not a problem. Okay, 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 great. Okay. All right. Um, once the infrastructure installation is complete, we are going to talk about policies, uh, master policy. How do we configure password rotation? How do we configure uh, the approvals workflow? How do we con configure the policies related to each of the platform. What would be the policies for Windows platform? What would be the policies for Linux platform? So we will configure all of this in the module seven. In the uh, safe management uh, module, we are going to talk about access provisioning. How do you allow your end users and individuals to have access to the privilege accounts that are onboarded in CyberArk architecture? 
So we'll be creating safes for that. Safes are basically containers inside CyberArk to store separate accounts for Windows. We'll have separate safe for Linux. We'll have separate safe. We'll learn how to control the user's access on those safes. We'll talk about a more granular level of permissions where we will be controlling uh, accesses on the accounts level on uh, account one or account two instead of directly doing it on the container level. So we'll be talking about uh, safe access provisioning in module eight. In module nine, we will be integrating Windows servers, Linux servers, some network devices and security devices. And then we'll move on to the use cases. So daily to daily tasks of the usual cyber act administrator. What do they uh, do on their, uh, what kind of tasks they perform on daily basis? So accounts onboarding, uh, password management, authentication, master policies, reporting, we'll have a detailed session on reporting where we will know our, how do we help our auditors to generate the report that they need? How do we help our auditors to keep track of the user activities on the privilege accounts? And how do we allow them to see the session recordings? Okay. The next module we are going to have uh, uh, the troubleshooting, the backup is now integrated with uh, disaster recovery. So we will have that uh, in the, after the troubleshooting. Troubleshooting is basically when we, when uh, sometimes there are issues in CyberArk, let's say CyberArk is not able to manage the passwords of a particular privilege account. How do we troubleshoot those kind of situation? You know, what kind of logs we go to? Uh, how do we increase the debug level? How do we raise the customer case support? How do we approach the situation if we are not sure what resolution steps needs to be taken? If let's say our uh, component is failing, our uh, PBW is not able to load and our users are complaining, how do we approach those kind of situation? Okay. How do, what kind of troubleshooting steps that can be done? So on the module 12, we are going to have uh, detailed troubleshooting use cases for each of the uh, common issues that organization faces in a typical cyber arc infrastructure. And the last module is going to be the disaster recovery where we will be setting up a backup infrastructure from for our primary database. We'll be replicating all the information from the primary and we will uh, allow our front end UI or rest of the components to communicate with the backup database in case something went wrong with our primary vault. So that we can avoid user interruption even in case our primary vault is impacted. We'll be setting up the entire disaster recovery server from scratch and we'll be performing a demo disaster recovery drill in module 13, where we will see how it works in real time. Okay. Uh, along with that, I'll also provide access to this uh, exercise guide, which contains uh, the detailed use cases, uh, for example, user management and password management task. Uh, if I go to, let's say the password management topics, it's going to cover a lot of uh, situation-based exercises, situation-based exercises, and all the answers, detailed steps, and all the screenshots are uh, here mapped already. You can take a reference from here and implement all those use cases in your lab if you want to practice these daily to daily tasks. Okay, anyway, we are going to cover all these topics in the uh, session itself, but if uh, uh, you want to have some additional use cases to practice, you can even go through this particular guide. Okay. Along with that, I'll provision the access to this uh, theory notes that we have, this handwritten notes where we have uh, mentioned the theory of each of the component that can help you prepare for certification examination and uh, interview. Uh, so most of the inter important topics are highlighted that you can focus for interview perspective. From interview perspective, that's it. Okay, so this is what you get. Uh, this course is going to be a long one, 20 to 25 hours is what I expect. Okay. So uh, that's all, that's all I have. Uh, with this, I'll leave the session to questions or queries that you have. Uh, yeah, uh, Sanjeev Prayag here. Uh, uh, I have seen a few of the uh, profiles related to cyber arc admin or engineer. I mean, it was info security engineer or uh, cyber arc admins. Uh, uh, some organization are asking for, if you are going for the implementation or configuration role, they're asking for basic Java knowledge. So uh, do we need that here? While no. implementing cyber arc, do we need Java knowledge? No, absolutely not. If they are saying they, they, uh, they are not 
No, uh, it's not required. Uh, at least for CyberArk implementation and administration, it is not required. If you want to go into depth of uh, CyberArk customization, uh, very few requirements come uh, in the organization level that requires in-depth uh, development. Even in that case, you wouldn't really require Java. You have a lot of other options as well. We will talk about that later, but you absolutely do not require Java or any scripting background for uh, implementation and administration course. Okay? You'll be installing those components and no, uh, no prerequisite, no coding requirement for uh, CyberArk at least. For SailPoint or uh, other identity tools, you might have it. For uh, this is just a tool-based implementation. Thank you. So, so Sanjay, like, uh, has, uh, has, uh, Sarag has already uh, asked you the question. So for the rest, I hear like a few topics regarding the REST APIs. So will you be covering those as part of this uh, training? Or like uh, REST API is something that I do not usually cover, but uh, I can give you a, a brief overview. That's not a problem. I can give you a brief overview. You can schedule okay. a separate session for that. Okay. And and uh, one last question from my end uh, for this. Okay. So uh, how about like, for example, like uh, see, basically we have few client set, for example, like if we are connecting to the database directly, we won't connect to the database. We'll be invoking the client, uh, client interface, okay? Basically like uh, the SQL client or, uh, or the Oracle client, okay? So will that be also integrated as part of the cyber arc? I did not get your question, Yanamin. Mean, can you repeat that, please? Okay. For example, like uh, uh, we'll be connecting to the database, like the application is connected. I mean, like I can't use the word application. Mm -hmm. It's like a kind of a uh, client, uh, database client. For example, okay. like a SQL client, we have uh, Oracle server. client, we have. Yeah. Exactly. Studio, to connect yeah. to the SQL server, we'll be mm -hmm. connecting to the all, almost all the DBS will be connected to the client instead of directly right. connected to the server. Right. Right. So, so will that be also like integrating like because we'll be entering username and password for that client right like, yeah so... absolutely yes i mean you have uh, a lot of default uh, platforms and processes already created in cyberarc that supports sql that support oracle toad connections that uh, supports server management studio so a lot apart from windows and linux cyberarc has capabilities to connect to a lot of different systems like databases and uh, even the websites like Gmail and Facebook can be exactly right, and also we have for the network network area also we have few network, yeah, absolutely you have a checkpoint firewall you have some other network client uh, that you can uh, connect through CyberArk that's possible okay so will you be covering this as yeah, part yeah, of sure. this uh, absolutely yeah. and I'll, I'll give you some uh, brief overview on that as well sure sure Sanjay because mostly we are looking for the hands on, like the, hands -on. because the theory part, yeah, we can go it, but mm -hmm. hands on will be will more expose us to how exactly it works True. in the real time. True. Absolutely, I understand that. Yeah. And and, uh, and will be <laughs> sorry for asking no again and again the question. Mm -hmm. So, will be there any difference between like, uh, uh, for example, like here in this uh, in this session, uh, many uh, members have been joined, so we have less experience, who have more experience. So. How exactly will it differ? Like, for example, if you have a one year of experience or two years mm -hmm. of experience, or I am like almost like I worked for 10 years in IIT. Mm -hmm. Now I'm interested to move on. So how exactly the difference uh, working on this solution? That's not really a problem, uh, Naveen. Uh, if you have a certain uh, cyber arc knowledge, if you have certain certifications to support that, I mean, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, you, you, you could uh, always say that you have this much knowledge, you can get your interview scheduled. And the rest of the, the things are going to depend on uh, whatever knowledge that you have. Yeah. Yeah. Your think, expectations will be a little different from see, when we are going to the entry level and we were mm -hmm. having the experience, the expectations will be different, right? Right, uh, uh, of course, the expectations levels are going to be different. But if you say that you have uh, not worked on CyberArk for all the 10 years that you have been in your IT career, the expect the questions are going to be according to that. Okay? So they are not going to go into much technical details of CyberArk. They are going to ask you, how do you uh, implement CyberArk and customize the CyberArk tool to suit your needs? Okay? How do you, uh, right. what kind of requirements you can implement through CyberArk and what can you, what kind of values you can add to the solution? So not going to be much into technical details. You okay. can even uh, focus on the architectural questions from CyberArk point of view. 
Okay. Because internally we tried it, so they are asking for the certification. So I think yeah, I think mm -hmm. be helpful for us also to complete this. We'll cover the certifications uh, part as well. Basically, these two guides that we offer are going to act as a uh, primary resource for certification. The defender okay. certification okay. we have level two is more yes. on more focused on administration exercises. So this guide is especially built for that. And for deployment okay. installation capability, we have the install lab guide. Which is going to give you the idea on the component installation and integrations of the uh, other functionalities. So this is the guide that you follow for Sentry. Other resources, I'll provide other resources to you uh, during the session. That would be helpful as well. Sure, okay. sure, sure, Sanjay. Thanks, Sanjay. Thanks for your time. Right. Uh, any other questions or any other queries? I know we are running over. Apologies for that. We are going to start the uh, batch from uh, this week itself. I'll uh, communicate the timings to you separately. Okay. And most likely by tomorrow, if not possible tomorrow, we'll uh, start it uh, from day after tomorrow. Okay. okay. So Sanjay, it will be like a, a, the daily wise or weekly wise? Yeah. So we are going to have a weekday session where we will uh, spend one hour each day. So that's five hour on one week. And we are targeting 20 to 25 hours. So uh, within a month is my target. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions or any other queries that you have before we close this for today? No, sir. Okay. If not, thank you very much, guys, for joining. Thank you very much for your time. Have a great one. Thanks, thanks, Sanjeev. Thanks, Sanjeev. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all. Thanks, all.